memorable night when he fought Muhammad Ali 22 years ago. All right, let's look at the tail of the tape. We've already told you about the waistlines of the two dirigibles. There's a nine-year age difference in both favor. He also has a couple of inches in height and three or four inches in reach as part of his physical advantages going into the ring tonight against Michael Dooks. Punch Eight. that numbers, Larry. Eight pounds more, incidentally, for Bo than in his uh, championship fight. But he says, I'm in good enough shape to beat Dokes. And here are some of our punch numbers. We can see how accurate Riddick Bo is, landing 50% of his punches. But Michael Dokes used to land a very high percentage. He doesn't anymore. There we can see how many jabs Bo throws. That's a lot of jabs. Michael Dokes doesn't use the jab hardly at all. Rules, Harold Letterman. Riddick Bowe and Michael Dokes will fight tonight using a combination of rules of the International Boxing Federation and the New York State Athletic Commission. Twelve rounds and for the first time in a heavyweight championship, the standing eight count is in effect. No three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The doctor or the referee can stop the fight. And Jim, if a butt occurs and the fight doesn't go six rounds, it's a technical draw. After that, we go to the scorecards. First Jim? time ever that the standing first eight count has ever. been in effect for a heavyweight championship fight. All right, thank you very much, Harold Letterman. Right now, Let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darien for the pre-fight introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time I would like to ask the fans here at Madison Square Garden to kindly rise. We received the sad note just minutes ago, the passing of a great legend, a legend in the tennis world. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the passing of the late, great Arthur Ashe. At this time, our timekeeper de Bell, Cecilio Tito Pedraja, will have the final 10 count for the late, great Arthur Ashe. Thank you. We're live here in the Big Apple, Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena, as Spencer Promotions, Madison Square Garden Boxing, and Main Events Monitor in association with Caesar's Word, Come on, Mike. proudly present the homecoming, the heavyweight championship of the world. And it's approved by the New York State Athletic Commission, the Honorable Randy Gordon Chairman, Rose Trentman, and Herb Washington Commissioners. It's sanctioned by the IBF, the Honorable Robert W. Lee President, Ms. Marion Muhammad, the supervisor in charge at ringside is also sanctioned by the WBA, Hilberto Mendoza, its president. The Honorable James J. Bins, the supervisor in charge in attendance at ringside. The chief physician in attendance at ringside this evening is Dr. Barry Jordan, along with his two fine colleagues, Dr. Billy Lapin and Dr. Rufus Sadler. The timekeeper to bell is Cecilio Tito Pedraja. Counting for the knockdowns is Wayne Kelly. The judges, Don Ackerman from Oneida, New York, Sheila Martin from Norfolk, Virginia, and Luis Rivera from New York City. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12 round title bout and refereeing his first, the first World Championship bout, referee Joe Santarpia. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First, in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks, 
with the white trim. He tipped in at an even 244 pounds. Professionally, he has 50 wins, 3 losses, 2 draws, with 32 knockouts. He is ranked currently number 8 by the WBA and number 11 by the IBF. All the way from Las Vegas, Nevada, the former WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Dynamite Dukes. Dukes. And his opponent in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the red trim. He weighed in at even 243 pounds. This young man is undefeated in 32 pro bouts with 27 knockouts. He is the IBF and WBA heavyweight champion of the world from Brooklyn, New York. Here he is, Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Bo. Gentlemen, you're boxing for the heavyweight championship in the world. You both know the rules. Uh, any questions at this time? I want a good clean fight, no, and I want you to road. protect yourself at all times. Shake hands now, and God bless you both. We've seen Dokes a number of times, guys, in which he goes out and shoots his bolt early and see if, sees if he can intimidate or put off his opponent. I'm sure that Riddick Bow is ready for that. He wasn't ready when Evander Holyfield came straight at him in the first round. He knows what Dokes likes to do. On the other hand, George Foreman, uh, Dokes appears to have worked up a nice sweat warming up in the locker room, and Riddick Bowe is bone dry in the upper body. Michael Dokes is doing the street thing, too. He's sitting watching this guy staring at him, playing little major mind tricks that may be effective to get him past the second round. The crowd a little bit quieter than we might have expected at the beginning of the fight. I would attribute that to the surprise announcement regarding the death of Arthur Ashe. Round one begins with Bo throwing the jab. And many people regard that as most effective weapon. Some say it's the right uppercut. Others would vote for the jab. effective left jab, but he's almost jumping backwards. He doesn't want to put a lot of power on it. Dokes slapping with the left, landing three left hooks to the side of Bo's face. Bo sticking the jab and landing virtually all of them early against Michael Dokes. Dokes has upper body movement, but not head movement, George. He's a stationary target. Yeah, he's dependent strictly on his quick hands, not his quick head or quick feet. And uh, Rick Bo can really take advantage of this. And Rick Bo has given this old pro too much time to stand around and think. Now Bo snapping Dokes' head back again with the jab. Tries to land the right hand and lands a short right inside. Dokes is stunned. And Bo it's takes the left hook. Bo is stunned by left hook. That's right. Riddick missing with the big right hand. Dokes. And down goes Dokes. Dokes into the ropes. Well, I don't think Dokes went all the way down. But the referee wants to give him what will amount to the first standing eight count. That was a very, very fast call. It was Dokes who decided to go out there and fight early like that, though. Wasn't Bo's idea. Short left hand inside by Bo. More than a minute to go in the round. Plenty of time for Bo to close it out. If he can keep Dokes in trouble, Dokes lands another left hook, but takes a right in return. Dokes virtually out on his feet. Is he going to stop it? Yes, he does. With 41 seconds still to go in the round, and now Michael Dokes is furious. And Dokes' advisors jump into the ring and begin to state their case, and it was a pretty quick stoppage, even though you say you're surprised, George. I'm surprised that he didn't stop it a little earlier. The guy was taking too much punishment. There wasn't a chance he was going to get a knockout out of it to pay him back. No way. He but he had landed fight. the two solid left hooks yeah, in return. He was in no shape to continue in that round. This guy came out for a first-round knockout. 
he was accurate, and he was going to get it. Well, my own personal opinion is that he was in no shape to come into the ring in the first place. Larry? Well, it's a heavyweight championship fight. Um, the crowd is very, very upset. This is not going to win Bo a lot of friends, even though everybody was expecting, as we call it, that this is or was a setup. You can't quarrel with the referee. Remember that when M Michael Dokes won the title, it was also on a quick stoppage in about a minute of one round in which everybody thought that was too fast. But you can't, the referee gave him every chance. He gave him one stand and eight count. He even a ball to give him the second stand uh, eight count. Uh, so My man was ready the referee fight. was That's more than good. generous. Well, we'll take another look at Dokes getting hurt early. Now remember, referee Joe Santarpia is the man watching this at close range. Bo was hitting, was hitting Dokes with jabs, straight jabs, hurting him. Dokes, as I said earlier, was going to try to make something happen. He, that big right hand wobbled him, shook him up, and that's what started it. But he was there to be hit. For a long arm fighter, the champion is very good at close quarters. This night he looked in the struggle. I mean, it was, it was like the champion of the world that he is. All right, there's Santarpia stopping the bout. Now, previously, you had seen the sequence in which Dokes reeled into the ropes, appeared headed down to the canvas. Santarpia stepped in and top, stopped the action, and Dokes never actually went down. Well, Dokes spent the week sleeping. And he continued sleeping right here in this fight. The referee was more than generous. He, he, he allowed him the chance to recuperate, not given the eight count again. So it was a fair fight. He won. He really won fair and square. But of course, there are going to be some fans, George, who will say, hey, wait a minute. We never saw him hit the canvas. How could the fight have been stopped in two minutes, 20 seconds? Yeah, I mean, and those fans are, are strictly the ones who don't understand boxing. This guy is so big and powerful. All right, let's go up to ring announcer Ed Darien for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Santarpia stops this bout at two minutes and 18 seconds of the first round and a winner by a TKO and still the heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Well, the questions are now going to come. Who comes next? And as Jim mentioned earlier, Ray Mercer, who was supposed to be next for Riddick Bowe, and might have also gone in about 2 minutes and 40 seconds or 20 seconds, is no longer in the picture. And we'll be talking to everybody about what Riddick Bowe's plans are next. Some people are guessing. Evander Holyfield. Championship belts over his shoulder. And in a moment, we will expect that Riddick will come down to ringside where we'll get a chance to talk to him. I guess Dokes is probably going to have plenty to say about this as well. Billy Crystal is in the building. He wants a fight. George Foreman, one more time, just state clearly the case for why this was a good stoppage despite the fact that Michael Dokes had not hit the canvas. Dokes went in to start a fight too quick. He started getting hurt earlier. The referee gave him one stand and eight count. He should have done it twice, but he gave him a chance to recuperate. It didn't pay out. Huh? Look at right here. Go ahead. The champion now standing on the ring apron, showing off the belt. The attendance was 16,332. That's regarded as astonishing, given the fact that the fight was televised live here in New York on HBO. And the live gate, $1,603,000 plus, sets a record for a Madison Square Garden event. And now, joining us at ringside is the champion, and Riddick, let's get started. Uh, we'll wait for the camera shot to change, and here we are. Congratulations. Uh, did you have a feeling coming into the fight that you were going to be able to get something done quite this quickly? Oh, just definitely. You remember I told you guys yesterday, I wasn't playing with the guy. I was coming in to, to bang him, and I knew he would be there. 
I guess that this tells us that 243 pounds, at least in this circumstance, was no problem whatsoever. Oh, not at all. And I would like to thank Mike Tyson for the words of wisdom he gave me, and uh, I'm going to take him on his advice, and I, I thank you, Mike. Mike Tyson, who made a derisive comment about your weight and said that you were, quote, obese. Now, you dedicated your victory over Holyfield to Mike Tyson. Are you now upset at Mike for having said what he said? Oh, not at all. I think um, what he said had a lot of truth to it, and um, I owe it to the American people and the public to stay in great shape, and that's what I'll do. So you're saying that with a totally straight face. Are you disappointed? that Michael Dokes is going to be seen by a lot of people not to have been in any shape whatsoever to be here tonight. Oh, not at all. you got to look at it like this in this aspect. I train hard. When these guys step into the ring, they're supposed to be in great shape. And, you know, what can I say? If he wasn't, that's, that's his fault. All right. You were connecting early with the jab. You hit him with a short right hand inside and then a short left hook inside. From that point on, it seemed to be only a matter of time. Was there any one punch you were looking to try to take him out with? I think I got a little over anxious and I wanted to load it with the right hand. But other than that, uh, things went pretty much as I anticipated. One thing that didn't go as you anticipated is the earlier bout this evening between Ray Mercer and Jesse Ferguson. Now, there had been an expectation that you were going to fight Mercer in May. And Mercer got taken to a clinic tonight by a superior boxing job on the part of Jesse Ferguson. Well, that was a dumb move by Mercer. We told him earlier to take another fight and that Jesse Ferguson might prove to be very difficult. And again, Jesse came in, he was ready to fight, and that's the difference. Jesse Ferguson was determined. I don't think Ray Mercer was in great shape. And so uh, he was able to pull out a decision. Well, this changes the schedule for Riddick Bowe, and some people are speculating that it moves Holyfield up in the rotation toward a rematch. What's your thought about that? Well, let me say this. I think Holyfield is a, is a great guy, and I think a guy like Evander would always bring the best out of me, so I would welcome that fight. Riddick, congratulations again. All right. Hi, Mom. Eddie Futch, he took care of your heart tonight. Absolutely no anxious moments, right? No anxious moments. And I didn't have to climb those stairs uh, but once. All right. Hey, Riddick, come back. One question. Since you tossed the WBC championship belt into a garbage can on December 14th, it appears to have become the plan for you and your manager, Rock Newman, to freeze out the World Boxing Council and try to eliminate them from the picture as a meaningful governing body in boxing. Now, does that mean that as long as that man, Lennox Lewis, sees himself as the WBC champion and tries to do business with that belt, that there's a chance that you would never bring him into the ring to defend your titles against him? Not maybe. There's no chance whatsoever. As long as he recognizes WBC, we can't fight. So if Lennox Lewis chooses to remain the WBC world champion and successfully defends that belt, then you are never going to go in the ring with him. That is correct. I'm the world heavyweight champion of the world. And if he wants to be a bogus champion and a top cat, then that's on him. I think the American people and everybody here know who the real champion is. Well, but what about the people who are going to want to see that fight just because they think of him as your primary opposition? Well, it's unfortunate that Lennox uh, is holding on to that belt. If he really feels like he can beat me and wants to be a real champion, then he needs to re uh, renounce the WBC, come on and take these two belts. So what you're really gambling on is that you can create the leverage necessary to make him renounce the WBC belt as a condition for coming to fight you? Well, I think the WBC is an unfair organization. As I told you the other day, that Don Kimmel did take to Lennox Lewis now, and it's already started. Everybody at Lennox Lewis has to fight in the WBC are Don King fighters. So you're at war with, with the WBC and Don There's King? There's one champion. And if, only, if, and if uh, Lennox Lewis happens to go to distance, he will not win. Simple as that. Against? Anybody in the WBC. Including Tony Tucker. That's right. So you're saying if Tony Tucker goes 12 rounds with Lennox Lewis, he'll become the champion of the WBC. Something. If Lennox Lewis hits him on the chin, they might call it a low blow. <laughs> <laughs> Rock Newman, the manager of uh, Riddick Bowe and the chief business maker in the division right now. Ray Mercer took a bad turn tonight against Jesse Ferguson. What does that mean for your May fight prospects? That means that uh, Riddick won't be fighting Mercer in May, I don't think. Uh, I've already gotten a call here at the uh, stadium tonight from MC Hammer representing Evander Holyfield. Uh, there's Tommy Morrison out there. There's Big George Foreman. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll take a, we had a press conference scheduled for Monday. At least we'll be going home a day early now. Are you confident the public will stick with you if you refuse to fight Lennox Lewis for a long time because of his decision to remain the WBC champ? Well, you must get something right first. We offered Lennox the opportunity to fight Riddick. Never said you didn't. He is the one who declined that. So the question is, why is he acting in a cowardly way? We gave him the offer. If he and his people are confident that he could be
beat Riddick Big Daddy Bo, he should have accepted the offer. He's the one that is running. He ran and hid behind the WBC and that garbage can belt. Didn't answer my question. Are you confident the public will stick with you if you take this course of action? This guy is a rising star that the public has fallen in love with. You see this full house here tonight. They will stay with him. They know there is one champion in the heavyweight division, and that is Riddick Big Daddy Bo. Thank you, Rock. Thank you, Riddick. Thank you, Eddie. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. All right, Joe, would you tell us how you saw what was happening in the ring? Well, at the beginning of the round, you saw the fight come out right away that uh, Bo took, a, uh, took the fight to Dokes, and he hit him a couple of times, he put him in the ropes there, and the only thing that held him up was a rope, but it was scored as a knockdown. That was scored as a knockdown when I gave him the eight count. So you thought that he would have been knocked down except the for the ropes? ropes. The rope saved him. He was hurt then, he stopped walling across the ring, got in the corner over here, and he must have got hit with about 20 punches before I decided to jump in. He was hurt, definitely hurt, and my job is to make sure that the fellas don't get hurt. Thank you very much. You're Bill. welcome. Jim? All right. Thank you very much, Larry. and. Uh